Dave, Flair versus Hogan. Um, it must have been the thought when they brought Rick into the WWF that this would headline WrestleMania. By the time we got there, as everyone knows, Hogan said justice and Flair and Savage. Why did we not end up with the Hogan-Flair match at WrestleMania 8? Vince loves big guys. Um, I think is is you got to remember that Sid came before Flair came, mm-hmm. and to get Sid, Sid was under contract to WCW, and um, they were negotiating. You know, I mean, I mean, he had a valid contract with WCW, and Vince, you know, told him, "Look, you're going to main event um, WrestleMania next year with Hogan. Come on over." And Sid went back and forth, and WCW upped their offer to keep him, um, you know, made all kinds of concessions. There was a time when Sid, had, Sid agreed to it, and then Sid changed his mind again. And he went to Vince, even though he had a valid contract. And to me, what was so weird about this was all so public. It was not a secret. It was not clandestine. Um, you know, Sid was, was saying this is what they're offering. It's like this was the most flagrant tampering and plus he was under, under contract anyway they right. could just say they didn't even have to renegotiate with him but it was one of those things where Sid was such a pain that they just felt that if he doesn't want to be here we might as well let him go under the proviso that he does the stretcher job uh, in a match god who was it with um El Higante. El Higante. oh that's right Eligante, he was going to do a stretcher job in a stretcher match for Eligante. And then the day comes, and he refuses to do the stretcher job. He was <laughs> on his way out. And they take somebody else. Somebody went out on a stretcher, but it wasn't Sid. I think it was, <clears throat> I don't remember how they did I don't remember how they did I was at the show. I, I had this thought in my head it was maybe one man gang went on a stretcher or something. But it wasn't Sid. And I'm going like, he didn't even do the stretcher job. It was like the craziest thing. But, but Vince promised Sid the, the, the thing. Then the Flair and Jim Hurd problems happened. Mm. And Flair quits, and he comes over. And Vince you know, decides that we're going to go with Hogan and Flair right away at house shows, immediately. Which was probably, with the benefit of hindsight, it was actually the right thing to do. Because every week Ric Flair was on television, he meant less and less. Just because they needed to portray him as, you know, Ric Flair, the, the world champion, who never lost his title, because that's what he was. And the, the guy, I mean, you don't, I, I mean, certainly you don't say, oh, it's the NWA champion, and it's from the other promotion, and and all that, you don't give the other promotion credit, I mean, or, you know, that kind of publicity. But there's a way to do it where he's an outsider and it's the war of the worlds. Um, this, again, it's the Zane Breslov thing. The first, the first actual match the two had was in, Flair and Hogan had was in Dayton. But the first, that was at a TV taping, it was a run-through, and people didn't even know they were getting the match. But the first advertised match was in Oakland. Um, and Zane Breslov advertised it like it was the war of the worlds. I mean, the match, you know, the dream match of the century, the biggest match ever. And they did 15,000 people or 14,900 people. It was just, it actually was not sold out. But in those days, by that point in time, we're in, in um, late 91, they weren't selling out anyway. It was, it was probably the biggest crowd in many years in this area for a show. And, um, you know, all was looking great for Flair and Hogan. Well, every week on TV, you know, they had their way of doing things. And it was to make Flair's title Mickey Mouse. And he's not really a world champion. And, <clears throat> You know, and Gorilla was out there, you know, you know, the, the role of Gorilla, who was like the voice of the, the things like, that's a fake belt, and that's not real. And he just became the million-dollar man, essentially, with the fake belt, mm-hmm. you know, claiming to be a world champion instead of the undefeated world champion, the legend, and all this. They, you know, they wouldn't call him Nature Boy. That's just Vince's thing. Well, we, we have to change something. And you, they didn't want to change the Ric Flair name because that would have been beyond stupid, so... And, and again, not calling him Nature Boy had nothing to do with the marketability of it anyway. But, you know, it was just, that's just how Vince was. Um, for whatever reason, in, in a lot of the markets, people wanted to see it, but they only wanted to see it once. The return matches didn't draw very well. And then, so this starts in uh, September, I believe. By the time we're in December, Flair and Hogan had run out of steam. So uh, Vince made the call that we're done with Flair and Hogan. And I mean, they were always going to do Flair and Sid at WrestleMania, I think. I don't know this because I know that the, um, the very first night, and I guess I can say this, the very first night of the very first show, um, after it's over, I, I remember talking to Rick. And it was like, you know, what do you think? And this and that. And I go, it was good. You know, it was, it was, the match was 13 minutes, I, I think, roughly, roughly in that range. And, you know, we're used to Rick doing 
30, 20, yep. you know, 25, 25, but probably 30 for the big one. And Rick wanted to do 25, 30. And Hogan goes, no, 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 no. You know, we, we save that for WrestleMania. And that's when, when, when Rick told me that. He goes, Hulk said we're, we save that for WrestleMania. In the back of my head, it was just like, you're not getting WrestleMania. And I didn't say that to Rick, but that's the first time I thought, you're not getting WrestleMania. I know it. It's not going to happen. Because of the promises made to Sid. The promise had already been made to Sid, and Vince, I always thought that in the end of the day, that, that Vince, when it came to WrestleMania for a Hogan opponent, he's picking Sid over Rick every, every time, mm-hmm. and he did. Whether it was, at the time it happened, it actually was the right move. People with, the, with hindsight are going, you know, no one wants to believe that, but I also went to some shows in, in the early part of the next year, 92, before Mania, and it was uh, Hogan and Piper against Flair and Sid, and the heat was... There was the, the heat was Hogan and Sid. I mean, when they were in, it was electric more than people had seen their Hogan and Flair for months. It was it was the it was the old program, and the old program doesn't work. You know, it, it, the old program wasn't going to work. It it um, you know uh, you know I I I you know look I, you know I'm I'm friends with Ric Flair, but I'll tell you that that Vince made the right call, and people people hate me saying that because there's that idea that they blew it at the WrestleMania, but. It had lost its steam by then. It's just it's how it was. Is Flair better about that not happening at WrestleMania? I never heard that he no, not really. And because I think Flair, I think at the end of the day, Flair loved working with Randy. Um, Flair could have his WrestleMania match with Randy. He wasn't going to have it with Hogan. He had a, you know he had a great match with Randy. Um, him and him and him and Randy and Brett and Roddy Piper were both were both tremendous matches on that night. And Hogan and Sid was the total shits. Absolutely. Um, of course, the storyline was that Rick was wooing Elizabeth. There was the, the WWF magazine photo spread, the leaked photo of him hanging out poolside with Elizabeth and, uh, you know, pal- palling around with her. Uh, it was kind of, this is kind of a hyper-specific question, Dave, so I don't necessarily expect you to remember, but on the off chance you do, leading up to the show, uh, Kurt Henning and Ric Flair promised to reveal one last photo with Elizabeth only wearing the staple where the magazine folds, and sadly, we never saw that photo. What, what was that? Was that just a tease, or did they uh, get cold feet on doing uh, something? Rand, that, that was that was Randy. Oh boy, that was Randy. Absolutely, you know, nixing. Randy nixed a lot of stuff that they were they planned then. But, you know, out of you know the fact that he was very jealous. So they went um, so far as to say they'd show the picture, and then Randy nixed it. He didn't get the chance to nix it before they even said they would show it. Right, right, right. He was furious about that. Yeah, yeah. Randy was very. Um, plus, the marriage was falling apart anyway in real life at the time. So he was even more uptight about everything. But Randy, um, yeah, it was just a bad, you know, real life got in the way of that one, yeah. Got, yeah. got in the way of a lot of the stuff there. And that's another one where I felt that, again, that the Randy and Rick was their first meeting. You know, that Randy and Rick didn't do – he they, they had no matches up until then because they were always doing the tags with Hogan and, and – Hogan and, um, Piper and Flair and Sid was was the big main event at all the house shows, and then they were going to the first Randy Savage and Ric Flair match was going to be WrestleMania, and I thought at that point in time that that again they should have done something other than what they did because I, the money to me was Randy chasing Ric Flair as champion. Ric chasing Randy was no money, mm-hmm. and after WrestleMania, one of the things about WrestleMania in those days was is it was all well and good, but some summers after WrestleMania did terrible business. Because you know you had the big blow off, and then yeah, you still got to still got to go on the road and, and make money. And some some years after WrestleMania, business was big, but but you had to have the right thing going on, or you you're, you're generally speaking, it was going to go down. And I thought that you know that uh, that WrestleMania um, and Hogan Hogan was leaving, and Warrior was coming in. So the um, the idea was that the WrestleMania matches were Warrior and Papa Shango, which was challenging be a big draw to say the least and rick and randy which i thought had a chance if it's randy chasing rick because the program was kind of hot on television but if it's if it's rick chasing randy it's like that's really to me that i felt that was really cold i thought that rick you know i thought rick should have been champion through about september and then randy finally at the end should have beat rick well instead they go with um they go with randy winning the first meeting and Randy defending against Rick, which didn't draw at all, because for all the reasons where I knew ahead of time it wouldn't. And then, because it didn't draw, and because Randy wasn't drawing as champion, they went back in September to Rick as champion, which they had no business doing. But, you know, Vince blamed it on, oh, Randy can't draw anymore, he's too old, blah, 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 you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Let's go to Rick and we'll, 
go to war, you know, and then, because war, we'll go to warrior, which was the plan. The plan was warrior to win the title. It didn't happen that way. So we need the transition to, to, to warrior. And, you know, Rick, Rick's, tr Rick's a reliable transition guy and one of the few guys who might be able to get a good match with warrior anyway. So that was the reason they did the program the way they did it. But I thought, I thought Rick should have had it for a long time and then gone to Savage. And I didn't, I didn't think Warrior needed the title so quick. But when Warrior came back, Vince did promise Warrior the title. That was one of the concessions in, in getting him to come back. So his hands may have been tied as well. Interesting. When we talked about WrestleMania 7, the preceding mania, and I asked you about Randy Savage losing the retirement match to Ultimate Warrior, what the reasoning was, you talked about how Warrior, uh, Savage rather wanted to start a family and wanted to get off steroids so that he could, you know reproduce and all the rest um here we are a year later and he's taking the championship from rick flair um and a storyline involving elizabeth um so i suppose then david at a certain point um because we all know as we talked about you know randy and elizabeth didn't have children and and in fact the, the relationship fell apart shortly around this time that the you know, savage in agreeing to come back must have also been a you know sort of seeding that ground that 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 wasn't uh, going to happen or or did he try to come back without the juice, and that's why he started wearing a shirt? Oh, that, that's that. why he started wearing. Well, well, at that point, at that point, we're talking '92. Um, they started. Uh, they started pretty. They started steroid testing. I think the first tests were November '91, but they uh, didn't count because um, baseline you know, tests. They became baseline tests. Originally, they were just going to be tests, right? You know, they were going to test everybody. Well, it turns out they couldn't run a promotion because 49%, I believe it was, of the company, I think that was the percentage that Vince told me, failed the test. Um, and 49% includes the women who probably weren't on steroids at that time, I don't think. Uh, in fact, I'd be pretty sure that those, the few women that they had then were not doing steroids. Um, they didn't have, you know, they didn't have China then. Right. Um, so, 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 anyway, so if you suspend everyone at that point, you could go, you almost got to close down, right? So, so that be, then it became a baseline test. Well, part of the idea of the baseline test is is that uh, you know guys had to start getting off, and and so um, Randy did get off. I mean, there were guys who did not get off, and and you know that I don't know. It's the weirdest. You know, there's there's a lot of weird stuff with that. I mean, Warrior, fa you know. War Warrior failed every steroid test. I think I believe he failed every single test he was given, mm -hmm. but he was never suspended. Mm -hmm. uh, Sid refused to take tests, um, and in fact, he refused to take the he 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 refused to take tests. And then I believe he failed a test right before Mania. But the idea that we're going to now suspend him and, and take him out of Mania because he failed the test right before the match with Hogan uh, that wasn't happening. Right. So what they did was, um, in the case of Sid, was he, he did Mania. Then they had the European tour right after Mania. So he does the European tour. Well, after the European tour is over, you know, then it's like, okay, now we're going to suspend you. And then he quit. And, uh, you know, but, but Randy, uh, you know, Randy, Randy wore a shirt. And, uh, you know, I, I, I presume that Randy followed the rules, uh, which a lot of people didn't do, but he did. Bret Hart defeating Roddy Piper. You mentioned that as well as a highlight of WrestleMania 8 legendary match. Wonderful uh, moment for Brett, um, and really a breakthrough. But I have to ask you: Here we are, uh, 1992, um, April 1992. Bret Hart beats Roddy Piper, WWF Intercontinental Championship match. Do you at all forecast in any way that comes September of that very year, Brett would win the WWF Championship? Absolutely not, because uh, um, you know it was promised to Warrior. Um, and, and, and even if it hadn't, um, you know, Brett was a fantastic wrestler, but fantastic wrestlers weren't getting the title. Larger than life guys were getting the title. So the idea, the night that Brett got the title, I didn't know Brett was getting the title until, you know, I don't know, minutes after it happened or maybe an hour, maybe, maybe an hour and a half after it happened. I, one of the guys from, from Saskatoon called me up, one of the wrestlers and just goes, the title changed hands. And I go, why the hell would they do it in Saskatoon? Mm -hmm. go, you know, and, and I figured it was, you know, Warrior. I didn't realize Warrior was in trouble by then. Um, and he ended up being fired just, you know, a couple of days. You know, I don't know, maybe it was a week or two later. Um, but it was right around that time. Yeah. But, but you know, I, you know I, I figured Rick was losing the title, and I figured it was to Warrior. Um, so I just thought, God, why, why wouldn't you wait for a pay-per-view? Why the hell would you do it there? And it's like, no, Brett. Brett Hart's world champion. I mean, I was, I was stunned. I was absolutely stunned. That they, they, they did that. 
And in retrospect, finally in WrestleMania 8, Dave, they ran um, the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis. Massive building. Uh, they announced 62,000 attendants. But I get the impression that this wasn't a successful uh, dome show for them, that, that they that they could have done more, much more. Um, the place held, they set it up for 70. The 62 was a real number. Okay. Um, but the paid was 47, and they uh. were paid them like crazy at the end. So it was... Um, it was a struggle. I mean, I, I you know, I, I don't, in, the, in that day, in that time frame, 47,000 people to me is not really a failure, but it was not a success. It was, you know, and, that, and you've got to remember, that was what, that was, they were, they were in the middle of a scandal then. So there was, you know, and business was about to collapse. In fact, it collapsed right after that mania. It, it pretty much, it pretty much collapsed. So, um, and Hogan left. That mania was Hogan's last match for, for almost a year, or about, I guess it was right about a year. Um, so things were bad and, you know, things were bad, you know, um, so it wasn't a, you know, I, I wouldn't call it a failure though, but, but they were expecting, they were expecting better than that. 